like silly things and he like plays tricks on Thomas. Thomas the tank engine puffed happily along his branch line with Annie and Clarabelle. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting on the platform. He looked at his watch. Well done Thomas. You are right on time and really reliable. Thank you sir, whistled Thomas. Right on time and really reliable, hummed the coaches. But the big engines were not feeling cheerful at all. Where's Percy, mumbled Henry. He's supposed to fetch our coaches. We get no rest, complained James. He edged angrily onto the turntable and spoke rudely to Henry. What's the matter, Henry? There's no rain today. Stop worrying and do some work instead. I'm not afraid of getting wet anymore, huffed Henry. Anyway, you look silly enough to be a clown. You should join the circus. Oh, whistled Percy. So you've heard the news? What news? About the circus. Percy, what are you talking about? The circus has arrived, explained Percy. I've been shunting special cars. Sir Topham Hatt needs your help, too. The engine soon forgot to be tired and cross until it was time for the circus to leave. Then Gordon and Henry were cross all over again when James got to pull the train away. A little later, Sir Topham Hatt returned. Come along, Henry. A tunnel is blocked down the line. You must take some workmen to investigate. Pushing cars, pushing cars, grumbled Henry. They stopped outside the tunnel. The workmen went inside. It was very dark and quiet, but not for long. Help, shouted the workmen, and they ran out. We started to dig at the block, but it grunted and moved, one said. Rubbish, said the foreman. It's not rubbish. It's big and alive. We're not going in there again. Right, said the foreman. I'll ride in the cars, and Henry shall push it out. Weesh, said Henry unhappily. He had been shut in the tunnel for being afraid of the rain, but this was worse. Something big and alive was inside. Peep, peep. I don't want to go in. Neither do I, said his driver, but we must clear the line. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, puffed Henry. Then there was trouble. The block was indeed alive and very strong. It began to push the train backwards. Out of the tunnel came Henry. Then the cars, and last of all, a large cross elephant. Well, I never, cried the foreman. The workman gave him some cake. He drank three buckets of water and was just about to drink another when Henry let off steam, cried the elephant. Water went all over Henry. Poor Henry. The elephant and his keeper were soon reunited, but Henry was most upset. An elephant pushed me. An elephant hooshed me. That night, he told the other engines all about it. 
Gordon and James felt sorry for Henry, but still teased him. First the rain, then an elephant. Whatever will you be afraid of next? Never mind, Henry, murmured Thomas. I think you were brave today, and really reliable, too. Do you think I have a favorite? Oh, goodness, I, I can't even think. There's so many stories. They're beautiful stories. It's just, uh, and I like the things that the stories have to say. Um, they have a very important point. It, it gives them an opportunity to learn something that's meaningful, and it puts uh, everyday uh, situations into a, into a format that they can understand. And, you know, a lot of good lessons for life are, uh, are learned through the Thomas series. Now Harold works all day, and he flies all around and up in the whole sky up there. And that's what he does because he likes doing that. And you know why? Because he likes that. Tank engines get lost in some sort of place, and then um, Harry um, looks, are you all right? And then they say, we're lost, so he flies back and um, tells them that he's lost, and he says, um, so top of that, that he's lost, and then they um, try to go out and look for him. <laughs> he's a helicopter, and... He's a helicopter, and he flies. He flies. Every summer, the island of Sodor is very busy. Holiday makers love to sightsee, and when the weather is fine, there is no better place to visit. Some people like to go to the mountains. Others like the valleys. Children love the seaside. One morning, Thomas was puffing along the line that runs by the coast. His two coaches, Annie and Clarabelle, were packed with children going to the beach. Everyone was happy. Percy was taking some freight cars to the harbor. Hello, Thomas. You look cheerful. I wish I could take children today instead of freight cars. They're the Vickers Sunday School, explained Thomas. I'm busy this evening, but the station master says I can ask you to take the children home. Of course I will, promised Percy. Later, Percy saw Harold. Sorry, Percy. Can't talk. I'm on high alert. Why? Bad weather's due. My help's always needed. Mind how you go, Percy. Huh, huffed Percy. As long as I've got rails to run on, I can go anywhere, in any weather, anyhow. Goodbye. Be careful, warned Edward. There's a storm coming. A promise is a promise, thought Percy, no matter what the weather. The children had a lovely day, but by tea time, dark clouds loomed ahead. Annie and Clarabelle were glad when Percy arrived. He was just in time. The rain streamed down Percy's boiler. Ugh, he shivered and thought of his nice dry shed. Percy struggled on past coastal villages and into the countryside. The river was rising fast. I wish I could see, I wish I could see, complained Percy as he battled against the rain. More trouble lay ahead. Percy, the water is sloshing my fire. Percy's driver and fireman had to find some more firewood. I'll have some of your floorboards, please, said the fireman to the conductor. I only swept the floor this morning, grumbled the conductor, but he still helped. Soon Percy's fire was burning well. He felt warm and comfortable again. Then he saw Harold. Oh dear, thought Percy. Harold's come to laugh at me. Something thudded onto Percy's boiler. Ow! exclaimed Percy. He needn't throw things. It's a parachute, laughed his driver. Harold's dropping hot drinks for us. Thank you, Harold, whistled Percy. Good to be of service. 
replied Harold and buzzed away. The water lapped Percy's wheels. Percy was losing steam again, but he plunged bravely on. I promised, he panted. I promised. He made one more big effort, and at last, exhausted but triumphant, he brought the train home. Well done, Percy, cheered Thomas. You kept your promise, despite everything. Sir Topham had arrived in Harold. First he thanked the men, then Percy. Harold told me you were a, a wizard. He said he can beat you at some things, but not at being a submarine. I don't know what you two get up to sometimes, but I do know that you're a really useful engine. Oh, sir, whispered Percy happily. <laughs>